Hi, everybody. How's everyone doing? Ingmar, Alexander, Thomas, how are you doing? Good early morning, Dale. Hi, K-Man, how are you? Very good. good day. Hey, got the whole crew here. Hello, guys. Morning. Okay. So oh, kind look, of like... Uh, Kind of like a uh, give back Wednesday, huh? Um, you're all you're all giving some back. Uh, I guess the question is, uh, do we put in a higher low? When uh, you guys were talking about the euro yesterday, I I said, you know, the caveat being that this is one two, and that there could be one more shot down. You know, this is exactly the same low um, from 2017, right? Uh, 103.40 was the low. It, it yeah. just seems like it's too juicy for, you know, the uh, black boxes and even people who want to get long to take it out and have some selling come in that they could buy into. So I still think there's a chance for this to happen. One more shot down in Europe. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, this at the moment, this 105 area, Again, is proving key. Yeah. Uh, just even in the, the short term basis, now we had a little six pit probe underneath it early on today, but we're, we're back above holding it. It's, you know, the level broke, came back, held, and now we've broken it and now it's holding again. If we get un back under 105 probably today and, and we see it holding below, then we should get a, a, a further push down. But 104 is probably the, the key area down yeah. for that now, 104, 103, 90. Um, and that's going to be the marker for whether we get a push down to that low. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, uh, if you're bullish, you, what you want to do is see a higher low here, you know, what yeah. you're talking yeah. about here, and then have something like this happen from there. You know, also what's interesting is with a strong dollar, uh, the end doesn't look this strong. And I just drew this line uh, yesterday. Tell me what you guys think about it. So, so off these key lows, um, comes in around 127. Uh, this rally looks pretty weak, you know, uh, compared to, you know, previous attempts. Um, okay. And with a strong dollar came in, uh, wouldn't you have expected maybe a pop in the end from here? Um, it looks very flat, that uh, last yeah. move. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Yeah, I, one, listen, 127 is, is key for the, for, we, we are right. watching, I am watching this, this big uh, uh, zone now, uh, which is like, call it 127, 131. Um, I've been buying off it last week. Um, Just I, trading it. We're in the yeah, just trading it. We're in the middle of we're in the middle of it. Um, I was saying this morning on the on the flow show that yesterday um, uh, was it on Powell or the retail sales? We had a we had a spiking to one twenty nine seventy five eighty, but the move yeah. back down was quite rapid and 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 a bit like. Uh, straight this one. In, the, in the in the way that it looked like a risk of somebody coming in the market uh, offloading right here. A, a decent amount, yeah, decent amount of um, of so. yen, but also but also uh, uh, cross yen, and uh, we have to be a little bit uh, careful if uh, if if after a couple of more tries, this one twenty nine eighty one thirty, the figure starts to cap. It it might might mean something. I wouldn't yeah. like to be a conspiracy theorist and say that uh, MOF is sending out their submarines, but we have seen it in the past. I would not rule it out 100%. Oh, they are. So that's come out in the news. So, um, yeah, here's a 10-year. Uh, again, the 10-year has a little more juice today on its candle compared to the yen. Mm. But, you know, same type of thing. Uh, after this CPI number, can't recapture those levels so no i think uh, that's that's key that's key yeah. and, and we've been speaking about it you know how you, you we're effectively at full fed pricing now we know what we're getting over the next three months and right. three meetings you know what what more does it have to do to to be to go up what more does you does have to come out in the market for yields to go up for, for dollar yen to go up for the dollar to go up when you when everything is is pretty much priced i mean look at power yesterday you know he was 
he was hawkish. You know, we might not stop at the neutral rate. We might have to do more uh, if inflation doesn't, you know, come back down. We, we're going to carry on hiking. We're going to have to crunch the economy potentially, you know, send yeah. unemployment higher. I mean, the mandate is stable prices and full employment. And here's, here's the, the chairman of the Fed saying, well, actually, we might have to cause unemployment. I mean, how, how crazy is that when you, when you look at it that way? But that's what they're prepared to do. And so, you know, when you get these now bounces in the dollar, um, like we saw over the data, I, I fear they're going to get hit um, because the upside is, is very limited now. Yeah, it, it it seems that way. And uh, Aussie holding up the best, I mean, compared to cable and euro, um, you know, Aussie, I know some people say if we start getting closes back over the 70-50, you could declare this the bottom. Um, so uh, we'll see. I mean, if the dollar does get a pop and uh, euro uh, flushes, if Aussie doesn't make a, a new low, that'd be a pretty good tell, wouldn't it? Say euro makes a new low and Aussie doesn't. Dale, can you put that, that Aussie on a daily quickly? Sure. Because uh, one of the guys in our room, Bran, he pointed out a, a confluence happening in the the uh, moving averages there. Uh, I'm not sure what you, if you use the same he, ones as us. He might mean the, this is uh, the 50 and 200. So they are converging at 72.80. Yeah, yeah. Is that and what the 55, he's talking about? Yeah, the 55 is just above that as well. So we've okay. got a little bit of convergence. So, you know, I like a, a bit of tech confluence. Yeah, sometimes they're magnets when they all, yeah. you know, group together yeah. like that. And uh, uh, S&Ps, I thought that we were going to get through yesterday, almost on the close. It looked like it was, but, you know, getting rejected from this area. They all look alike, don't they? You had, you know, this bounce in S&Ps and a down day. You had this bounce in Euro and a down day. You had this bounce in gold, not much of a bounce, and a down day. So silver looks more like those. It bounce, and silver's holding up the best. So um, all one market, and uh, all centered around the dollar, I think, or yields. I, well, I mean, the chicken or the egg. They're both <laughs> the related, right? car. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, sell. Good morning. So you, you're around, buddy. How are I'm you? I'm here. I'm very well. How are you? Okay, so oh, dried um, out. I'm refreshed, huh? dried out. Yep. <laughs> yeah, nice. Uh, Tiny the bit sea sunburned. Was blue. But, uh, very, yeah. yeah. And warm. Nice. Man, I, I know I'm biased, but this is the best country in the world. Seriously. You, well, <laughs> you're all <Okay>. invited. <laughs> all right. So, uh, so what, um, what are you thinking here in? Uh, Silver now that the gold silver ratio did turn. I mean that you know it hasn't confirmed that's the end of this rally, but this yeah. is a pretty good reaction. Um still think uh under twenty is possible here. Especially. I agree. I I, I um, got in at twenty one fifty seven early this morning. It was more like a short term trade. Got out uh, at break even because it dipped again. So big nothing on that trade. But um, my view remains the same. So the Fed, uh, Jay Powell, is telling us they're going to keep going. And like um, uh, Ryan very cor uh, correctly said, they don't seem to be discouraged by the fact that they're going to hurt employment. At least in the short term, they're going to hit, hurt um, growth, uh, but they want to bring inflation down. Now, I, I still believe that when they turn, which they will, they're going to cite um, uh, employment as one of the main reasons. So they're going to say, "Look, it's either going to be higher inflation for a bit more, or you know, you're start, you're going to start not having jobs." Um, and that's a very powerful argument um, to the to the people because it's one thing to have your cost of living increase by 5-10%. The other way, it's a different thing to not have a job. So yeah. I think for now, as long as equities are still holding up relatively okay, they're going to keep going. And um, as long as yields are, are still high, 10 years is hitting 3% again, um, I don't see how we're going to be anything other than bearish stocks. There are going to be bear market rallies like we saw yesterday and uh, yeah. you know last few days. But overall, my bias is still firmly bearish. And I think the uh, the thing to do is to be selling rallies. Um, the dollar 
uh, I have mixed feelings about the dollar. I think it might have another final push, but I think the given what's priced for the for the Fed and Jay yeah. Powell told us they're going to be doing more 50s and uh, they're going to keep going and they're going to be doing quantitative tightening and all that. You know, what more do they need to do for the dollar to go forward, um, especially against the euro? Um, and we saw euro inflation. Uh, okay, it's... Um, didn't quite match 7.5%, came in at 7.4% year on year. This is still way, way above the target. Same with the UK, 9%. I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, uh, and inflation's everywhere. So as long as this persists and as long as, um, especially the Fed, but central banks are hiking or are going to be hiking, I don't see how equities can um, outperform in any way. Okay. So, so maybe, um, uh, yeah. maybe you know, what could uh, possibly, uh, you know, give the dollar one more surge would be something unsettling, even though the whole thing is unsettling, but the market has kind of uh, grown accustomed to what's happening in Ukraine. I don't know how you can, but it has. It's not and maybe just Ukraine. some uh, yeah. escalation. Yes. Go ahead. So you have Finland. Sorry, sorry. Didn't yeah. want to, um, That's okay. Uh, you have Finland uh, saying right. they're going to join... You know, this is this is not a um, a thing to uh, to dismiss. So I think we could get um, uh, some high volatility on the back of. I don't know. I hope it, I hope it doesn't happen. But you know, Putin could take more action. You know, wherever yeah. he he decides he's to. So, well, you know, I don't a know bit, what he is, but think? yeah, he's, it's it's a difficult situation. He thought he was going to get in Ukraine, win this thing within forty eight hours, and look, you know, two months later or however long it is, it's still ongoing. So I think there is always a risk for for another bad event or a bad development, and that will definitely give the dollar a push. I mean, that's yeah. the knee-jerk reaction always. Yeah. So, um, yes, you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, so uh, regards, regarding metals, I think we should be waiting longer. Okay. I think we I think we may, in silver, we may test uh, high 19s now. So, you know, I'm still waiting. There is uh, a nice there is a nice support around 18 that I'm looking at. 18? Yes, okay. there are the equal lags measured from that 2021 highs. Yeah. I mean, those levels, they are pre-2008 uh, levels. If you think at what monetary supply has done since then, if you think at what commodities have done overall, it is probably the cheapest uh, metal slash commodity in the universe at the moment. So, you know, you have to be patient with this. I think this is going to work out really well. But uh, you want to get in at, at best uh, level as you can. Or at least I do. I, Wait, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did I... I'm sorry. I'm and good morning, guys. Say, I, did, I just uh, I, I just came on and Stelios just you got back from the what islands were you on on Greece? Have quite a few. Go on. And, and, you, and you came back and just to pedal silver again. I mean, you know, I mean, do we have to hear this again? It's got to pay for the holiday somehow. <laughs> I mean, don't you think, guys, that if we get back above this, Dale, Dale, like Dale I can't believe you. I can't, Dale. I can't believe you let Stelios come in and do this every day. Well, just you know, I'm kidding. a host. So Stelios, you know, I, I would have offered him a, a cocktail, but it's no, too but, early. But, so. but let, let, let me early. ask, let me ask you this, Stelios, uh, and, and, and I'm, you know, jokes aside, guys, I'm, you know, I, you, everybody knows I love to harass Stelios and <laughs> I am definitely jealous because of uh, the pictures that he was sending over from, from the catamaran, but oh, he loves uh, doing that. I know. It's like, Hey, you guys out hey. in the desert, look at me. <laughs> yeah. um, but I got to, I, I, I want to ask I want to ask, um, you know, this breakdown that we saw in silver probably caught a lot of traders off guard. A lot of people were trying to, you know, pick, pick, pick it, pick it off at that twenty one. What is it, twenty one fifty or so? And we yeah. broke below that. And and uh, you know, are you going to start looking at this as maybe a false breakdown where it just kind of shook the trees a little bit? I was and, just going to ask you that, Blake. If well, we well I, I beat there. you to the bunch. Well, you always. <laughs> No, 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 I keep no, my but, hands. Up. I keep my hands up, though. <laughs> but what, what do you think here, Stel? I'm I'm not convinced yet. So okay. I'm not I'm not doing All anything. Right. I'm not convinced. I hate to say it, but I'm not convinced. <laughs> well, you know, I, I I the way I think the way that you and like Steve, uh, uh, you know, their approach to the market much more conservative. Where because you're more longer term. You know, we exactly. 
uh, like you take a K-Man or a Ryan or myself, Dale's probably very similar. You know, we, we, we scalp the markets quite a bit. Greg, uh, uh you know, uh, Greg is more of a swing trader. I, you know, I pin as, and you know, we, we sometimes do a lot of scalping and I like to, I like to find people like caught wrong footed. That's like the funnest way yeah. for me to trade, uh, the markets. And, um, you know, when I'm looking at the silver market, it's like, man, if we could just, just get, get back above 22 bucks, I, I might actually take it long just to, you know, just to try yeah. to catch some, some traders off guard, but, and, and good morning guys. Um, good morning, I, I was, good morning. And, uh, Ryan came in, I, I was listening and Stellius, I was listening to you guys on the uh, flow show today. You know, we have the Eurozone CPI. What do you guys make of that? I mean, it came in a little softer than expected. I mean, the Euro came down, held the 105 level. But what, do you think this is like a, you know, kind of a trend that we might be seeing globally or, you know, the, starting with Europe or, or what are your thoughts there? I mean, it, it was the final number. So, you know, that doesn't usually change an awful lot uh, from the from the flash number. Um, but it's held up, you know. On the on the last period, it's it's around about the same level, so it's, there's no real signs of it coming down yet. You know, we've had the big PPI readings as well; they were still hot. Spain came off a bit, obviously, this month. They were up at what nine point eight percent, and it, it dropped way down. Yeah, you know, are we at the top? I, I don't know. I, I think we moderate. I've been saying it for a while. I think we we will see signs of moderation. Whether we see just some up and down action, you know, one month it's going to dip a bit, one month it's going to go up again. Um, if we do, if we do start breaking new highs, then the the proverbial poo might hit the fan. Um, but if if it does moderate, central banks are going to be giving it the old "I told you so." so yeah, well, why, why new highs in WTI guys? Is that yeah, why would inflation likely? moderate with with oil breaking one fifteen and going higher? Well, you, uh, you no, know, that, that, go ahead. But that's not going to trickle through over the next month. Um, you know, if, if that lasts, if that move lasts and we see oil up here, it's a it's a it's a constant thing. There's always a lag. You know, you can't look at this the oil chart here and think, right, next month Eurozone inflation is gonna be another five pips higher because you've got the lag in it. You know, we're we're probably three, three, four, five months behind what happens in, in commodities that actually filter through to the inflation numbers. So we're no, probably still to. gonna get the Ukraine stuff this probably yeah. isn't really factored in yet. Um, that's probably starting to come in now. So maybe another, you know, two, three months, we'll see if, if inflation starts to slip a bit. Hey, Dale, do you mind if I take the charts here? No. And, and, and while you're doing it, you know, we had that decent retail sales numbers this week, guys, but they've uh, creamed, they creamed Walmart and now yeah. they're creaming Costco. These retailers Target, Target's are under, coming out today too. Oh yeah. Tar they're oh, yeah. they're yeah. under margin pressure. They're trying to press, uh, you know, pass on the prices, but then demand is falling. So uh, I think it's the worst day Walmart's had in its history, or maybe back to '87. It's uh, down what 11 percent? Is that is that what it was? I think it was 15 yesterday. Oh my God! Look at that chart. I mean, yeah. that's just that's gnarly. I yeah. mean, but but you know, let's not you know, forget what Walmart's done in the last year. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's Walmart for crying out loud. It's not Netflix, it's Walmart. It, it, but yeah. wasn't it surprising though, Dale? And I'm, I'm just asking you this uh, as, as a, as an observer, maybe you were trading it. I'm not, not sure, but we did close out the day, you know, with the S and P at its highs with yeah. Walmart under, under pressure. Same with the Dow. I mean, boy, you know, can they them. rotate. What's that? They always uh, find a way, another group to rotate in. I, I don't know. The strength was in tech. Remember the other uh, day you said, what's the best, uh, your best trade for risk on? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Semis were up like, I don't know, 6% yesterday. Well, you know, and then we had, again, here's the right. S&P closed at its highs. NASDAQ it's a great trading closed at its highs. Uh, and the Dow also closed at its highs yesterday. So, you know, minus Walmart. So it's really yeah. interesting. Um, that is a that is a uh, you know real uh, good statement about the strength of the market, even when a, a general hits a deck. You know. So. Yeah, well, that's one of many that could could uh, get taken out by a sniper anyway, uh, by the earning <laughs> sniper. So um, you know, and and Target's going to be another big retailer today. I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, TJ Maxx is also reporting today, and that's. 
that's another and I, the reason why you need to be watching that as um as as a as a trader uh, you know TJ Maxx is a huge discount retailer yeah. you know so you know th- that's where companies if re- if you sh- you see a shift in retail it, it goes from oh, I'm not shopping at Walmart or uh, excuse me at uh, Nordstroms I'm shifting gears over to TJ Maxx and all those uh, heavily discounted um, stores but and they tend to do better in a, in this type of environment. So it's going to be interesting to watch them, especially six months from now. But I, I, I wanted to talk, I want to go back to crude oil really quick, just because um, I know we got sidetracked on on some earnings here. But crude really hit that 618 retracement. So 116 level, it's been key. You know, we, we've, uh, you know, here at Forex Analytics, we've, whoops, get, let me get rid of those charts. Um We've uh, we we talked about how important that crude is. You can see one sixteen with an asterisk, meaning that it's very very important resistance. Uh, but Target's I'm going to ask you guys twenty four percent pre market. What's that? Martin is saying Target is down twenty four percent pre market. Wow! Wow! That's what I said earlier. Wow! Yeah, yeah that's the right. The numbers already out. Yeah, the numbers already out. Yeah. Let's uh, you know, just take a look yeah, at twenty four percent. Oh, a, oh, a there it is. Like I, I, I was off my chart. Holy oh, yeah. Moses. Wow. Yeah. That's really down there. Um, but I'm um, going back They'll to fill crude. the gap today. Right. Right. Blake? Yeah. Yeah. No, I wouldn't <laughs> want to stand in front of that train. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, that gap. <laughs> the, 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 the big question I have for you guys is uh, what, what point does crude turn the turn, turn negative for stocks? Like at what point does crude it's rally it's, it's bullishness turn the tide for equities i i've always believed it's somewhere up near these highs if not new highs so do you guys have a, an idea of that because uh, you know I'm, I'm watching crude like a hawk not because it's a great trading product at the moment because it's not it's just more sideways but i want to see how the market is affected by crude prices i actually believe that if crude heads lower i know a lot of people like to use it as a risk off risk on indicator but if it if it actually breaks lower below ninety three, I think that's going to be a swoon for uh, for stocks personally. Uh, but I think if it gets above like one twenty, I think stocks start to see it as a negative. Uh, any any opinions there? I, th- I think oil, you know, it could take another leg higher. China's looking to reopen, but it's not fully going guns blazing. Um, and if we get further confirmation, are we going to get that shoot higher? That's I think that's the big risk for for uh, an upshoot in this All one right. um, but like you say where, how does it feed into stocks well it's 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 uh, yeah it's so more i'm more curious about risk it's more risk appetite yeah. and risk aversion that that i tend to care about at this stage in the game i think it, turns, I think it, it maybe becomes a, a risk negative because you know you've got people like target who are suffering yeah. and retailers you know a heavy part of their business is, is transport shipping goods around and stuff like that. And those costs will continue to rise. So they're getting double squeezed, getting double squeezed on the consumer side, double squeezed on the, the price input side. So yeah, you know, it's, it's going to become a heavy weight around stocks, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Uh, I got another question for you guys. This is for uh, Stelios, Cayman, Grega, Dale, whoever is it, wants. Is it related to sailing? And, uh, it is. No? It's related to okay. Bitcoin and Michael say, I'm just kidding. I, uh, I, I, I got a phone call yesterday from, um, you know, the, the gentleman that I traded for, I did prop trading for, for like five years. And, um, you know, he, he, he just got finished traveling and uh, headed back into the, the Hamptons. And he's like, okay, I'm settling and get back to trading and blah, blah, blah. We were start, we were talking and we were talking about like stagflation. And what's the best way to trade it? Because that, that was like our big, you know, we just, we talked around it for like, uh, uh, you know, 10 minutes. And I, and I really, I, I've come to the conclusion, I have no idea how to trade a stagflationary environment, you know, where you have high inflation, but the economy is slowing. I, and I'm talking about the dollar. I'm sorry, I should be a little bit more clear as far as how I want to approach the FX market. Do you guys have any, because be, I, by the way, I should also say it's my base case that we're going to have persistently high inflation. You're going to see another, you're, you're going to see another uh, uh, GDP print negative. People are going to yell stagflation, but how do we trade it? What's the best trade out there for that? What, what do you guys think? 
I personally think the uh, the thing to aim for in in a stagflationary environment is really to minimize the losses. I can't think of a of a trade that's going to consistently perform well uh, during stagflation, apart from outright shorting. Um, you know stocks which are going to get hurt but uh from from that kind of environment we're seeing you know target and uh walmart and all that where they're trying to not pass on the cost of uh products yeah. uh, increasing um but if you're if you don't want to short something then <laughs> you're really trying to minimize your losses so i would i would very um weirdly say the best position is cash and i know in an inflationary environment cash is, is not a good place to be, but you can always be in cash for, you know, six months, a year or something like that until cash. markets. So yeah. Does the cash be in the dollar? Cash being, well, oh, whatever. Cash. Ah, that's yeah, the question. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, so Dale, when you turned 50 and we hit, we had stagflation, <laughs> uh, you know, back in the seventies or eighties, <laughs> when did, um, <laughs> And my win button. Yeah, I had to, I had to. I remember I'm it. I'm yeah. win. No, Whip but, inflation now. Huh? But but how did how how do you think the dollar is going to react? I mean, what do you, what do you the think? Dollar was under pressure then, and uh, the you know was crisis investing. Doug Casey, uh, your long metals, uh, your uh, your short the dollar. Maybe okay. look at uh, commodity producing currencies. Interesting. Yeah, well, I know we're in yeah, a different the, the you know corner. we're we're in a different day and age, but. Uh, and and uh, that's interesting. You say that you know the dollar index was my chart of the day yesterday for um, for it's just on our free free, blah, 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 free blog here the chart of the day and I and I'm making the case for the dollar's topping here and and you guys should all know my analysis or at least most of you um, you know if you look at that weekly chart it's there's the high from 2017 spike high post COVID that was a low from what uh, two weeks ago. So we spiked down there, held 102.30. Below 102.30, things get kind of ugly. Below yeah. 103, I uh, I get a little bit bearish. And, and I've I've argued, you know, to myself, not with anybody else really, <laughs> that um, that we might be developing some sort of cup and handle pattern. But it doesn't mean I want to run out and just go ahead and you know start trying to buy a dip in the dollar somewhere down here. I mean, because. Theoretically, we could actually set up for a you know much bigger reversal in the dollar, depending on what happens with this uh, a stagflationary environment. And let's say Dale, you are correct, and the dollar does come under pressure, and Stelios for once in his life turns correct, and silver actually goes up. I mean, you know, those no, types of things can't. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding, At Stelios. You know, I'm just joking. He he, Blake doesn't like the previous. Love you, man. Didn't like my previous trade, did you? <laughs> the fact that it was, took two know, years to perform. I was just, but it did I was perform, just, man. I was just really <laughs> jealous when you picked it up at like twelve or whatever it was. No, it wasn't it, twelve. It was fifteen. It was fifteen, and it ripped to like what? It, what? It, well, the, I didn't catch the top, but somewhere between twenty-four and a half and twenty-five. That was good for two years, man. Yeah, it was, was a really, it was really good trade, and I'm still jealous and. Hating you every moment for it, and now I have to. <laughs> now, I have to now this is my this is my redemption. Um, no, but real realistically though, like uh, you know, see these precious metals might maybe that's what causes the turn because they have been really uh, heavy as of late. I mean, they yeah. really have not performed well. So, um, okay, real quick, and 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 thanks you guys for your uh, for your comments here because we're about two minutes away from Canadian CPI. You know, Canadian CPI, we're, we're kind of boxed in. I, I think we were boxed in between this 128, 127 level. We came out of an ascending wedge. Uh, everybody in the Forex analytics chat room has been playing it really on the short side for the last couple of days as we broke down. But now that's, I think the 129 level is really, you know, resistance that we need to be looking out for. But I have to also point out that the, uh, you know, a strong CPI number, I mean, you got a, you got a nice little bear flag here developing with the dollar CAD. I mean, this loony... You, you know, false breakout above 130. Uh, do you guys have any any solid feelings here? Okay, man, I haven't heard much from you. Ryan you have any... nailed the top uh, last week and you the know, room. I think it, I think that's like a, that that's 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 pretty consistent of Ryan. So I I, I only expect that from Ryan. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. but I uh, think it was in, off five, 10 pips. So, <laughs> came man, you have any thoughts here on the the Canadian CPI? No, not uh, not at all. It, it will come out where it comes out, my friend. <laughs> all right, all right, uh, Greg. Uh, I haven't heard much from you. Uh, any, any, any silver? Any opinion hey. on? Yeah, I think that the uh, general idea is still crude oil, as you talked earlier. I think it potentially will stay in uptrend, and I think that dollar cat 
uh, sooner or later we'll see a deeper pullback. We are also making a nice reversal from that 1.3 level. And I think regardless of the number, I think that CAT will stay uh, strong here. Well, here we go. Let's see if that number is strong. We're going to, we should break lower. Uh, 5.7 year on year is strong. Yep. And by the uh, way, this is, this is the data flash. You see how quickly that data gets released. This is included with your Forex analytics subscription. So, you know, you pay $1 really for 10 nice. days, you get this. It's yeah. nice to have that data, you know, released in, in right in front of you, you know, alongside with uh, you get uh, live squawk, you know, in here too. It's, it's all it's your all. own Twitter feed on there too. I like, and that. you get your own customized Twitter feed. So you can, you know, ignore, ignore uh zero hedge and put everybody else up there, yeah. you know, whatever you want to do. It's pretty cool. Right. But, yeah. um, well, let's see if the dollar CAD breaks down and we get below uh, 128. Yeah, I want to remind everybody, uh, this is cool. Like, this is what I did this morning. Um, uh, this morning, I got up uh, about an hour and a half ago uh, and I listened to the Flow Show recording uh, and I got to get caught up with, uh, with Ryan and K-Man and Stelios this morning. Um, and so make sure you guys listen in to the flow show. This is a free webinar. What time is it, uh, Ryan? Uh, 9.30 GMT, 10.30 London time. And now you guys talked for an hour, almost an hour today. Is that normal? Uh, yeah, it has been. It has been. We're running about 40, 40 minutes to an hour. It depends what's going on in markets and what we get to talk about. You know, That's, no, that's no awesome. Set. I, I tell you what, if I was if I was awake during those times, I I would be definitely on that on that uh, show, um, the flow show there, and uh, because I you know wake up, I have to sleep like a normal person. I I can't, but I love re watching the recordings of the show afterwards. So uh, make sure you guys check it out. It's the flow show. It's a free show that is available to all of you. Um, especially if you're in Europe or in Asia. So uh, so make sure you check it out. It's just another. You know, offering the Forex analytics is offered to you guys. It's free to, just to get keep you informed and up to date and what's happening in the market. So, uh, team, I want to thank you all. Dale, I want to thank you for always being here every morning, and I and I hope you have a great uh, interview today. Thank you, Blake and team and Ryan. You know what? If Cheers, I guys. was if I was a, a crystal meth freak, I'd I'd see your show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. I'm not sure what to make it, anyway, I could get up a few hours early. I have a sleepless night every once in a while, and uh, it'd be great to tune in. Uh, I love your analysis and and K Man's. You guys have been a great addition to the team. Likewise, mate. Likewise, let's be hundred percent. All, right. All right. So, uh, Jean Francois, welcome back to Face. Got you on mute, and hey, there we go. There you go. Uh, the uh, it's the free chart. <laughs> it's a free charting analysis. Yeah, experience. Uh, yeah, uh, pretty much. I've uh, I've been doing this for a few years. I'm 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 a nobody when it comes to trading. I'm not. I I, oh, I never went that. to school for this. I never. I never. I don't have a. Uh, uh, yeah, you Any did. kind of. I, you I, have I a don't college have... degree from the University <laughs> I, uh, of Hard Knocks. Uh, yeah, I, I would imagine so. Uh, I besides that, uh, besides that, I'm an electronics engineer by trade. So I, I do have the ability to focus on problems. And I think that's what got me through uh, to the winning side of trading. And so okay. uh, from a while ago, I, my, our, our last interview, I think, was uh, beginning of February. Uh, you and I were speaking and I, I was thinking at Are the time. Are you going to share your screen, Sean? Oh, yes, wondering. yes. Okay. So. Yes, there we go. All right. So you, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You and I were talking in February, and uh, at the time we were thinking the euro might be dropping a little further, which it did. Uh, actually, let me switch to my other browser. Uh, here okay. we go. And so we just have when your you, picture up there. Yeah. Right oh. Oh, you have to share. Hit the green yes. share screen. Yeah. There you go. There, here, there, here there we go. Okay. So when you and I spoke last time, we were right there February first. Uh, a couple days later, our friend uh, uh, We just lost your audio when you began to share. Oh. Um, now you're okay. Go ahead. Oh, okay. And so uh, a couple days after you and I met, Francine Lagarde released the uh, ECB numbers. And then right. shortly thereafter, uh, Mr. Putin started his invasion. And so the euro has been falling ever since. At the time, I had a target of 1050. 
uh, we got to the target and then some. <laughs> yes. right? And so as we speak, uh, as we speak right now, I'm thinking this la this latest low, the low of 2017, 2016, uh, all the way back here, yeah, is going to get retested. I think I think you may have mentioned that at yeah. the beginning of your show this morning. And yeah. so if this is to happen, then uh, uh, as a result of that, I would expect a bounce back up to the to that break, 38% uh, of that big big drop. Back and so, uh, as I'm looking, yeah, yeah, one, yeah, that, that, exactly. And so that yeah. would be a 38% retracement from that upper drop. Uh, when I look at that through trading view, I'm looking at the dollar to get my bearings. And when I see the dollar on the monthly scale, I'm looking at something like this. And so, yeah. Uh, be, being a, a range trader, I see ranges on all time frames. On the monthly time frame, the range I'm looking at looks something like this. And being a measured move, I look to the I look to the Dixie to get its find its way up to 116 or so over the course of time. All right. So uh, as we speak right now, this is the current month that we're in. I would anticipate the euro to drop back a little bit. So uh, sorry, the Dixie Dollar. to drop back uh, okay. towards. Yeah, to, to, toward towards uh one hundred. John, so someone's if, asking if is I this see in, that move. Someone's asking, is this in uh, yeah, Trader sure. Evolution platform? Uh, this one showing? here is Trading View, but my okay, yeah, my trading platform is Trader Evolution. Th this is Trader Evolution, uh, and okay. so I use Trader Evolution for my day to day trading, but I use Trading View to do my drawings, to do my analysis. Well, okay, uh, there so you go, Ronnie. with Trading View, when I'm looking. When I'm looking at the Dixie, uh, I, I start off on the higher time frame. I look at this chart maybe once a month, and then I focus mostly on the weekly and the four hours. So the weekly shows me something more practical, something more tradable. And uh, when I look at the weekly Dixie, this is kind of what I'm looking at, looking for a retracement back to the 100 level. On the four hour chart, which is something even more practical, I can actually play this hour yeah. by hour or half hour by half hour as I see fit. And so, so the this is the picture today, I'm looking uh, at. Pop we're getting today yeah. is going to be a yeah, failing yeah. rally, like a B wave and then a C to come. Exactly. Three That's kind wave. of the, the, yeah. my train of thought. Exactly. And so uh, looking at the Dixie in that perspective, then I can go over to look at my Euro and then trade the Euro in, in that same fashion. Now, my trading hall gets done on the one minute chart. I place all of my trades on the one minute chart. I manage them through on the one minute and I close them on the one minute. And the perception that I have is it comes from this little box here. Uh, this is a sigma. It's the smallest move that the five minute chart is willing to make. And once I've determined what that sigma is, I take those dimensions, which is nine pips tall, 12 five-minute bars, and I apply those dimensions to my one-minute chart. And so now I have a nine pip box by 60 one-minute bars long. And I just play through that two pips at a time. And so as I'm playing for two pips, two pips, two pips, I'm looking for support or resistance, looking to my left. And my brain is now tricked into believing that I'm in total control of my risk. My box has a call of action on three sides, right? If I break the top of the box, I have something to do. If I break the bottom of the box, I have something to do. If I break the edge of the box, I have something to do. If I remove the boxes, it's just price floating in midair. It becomes very... Uh, ambiguous. I, I have a lot more questions and I don't have a plan on three sides. So my, my trading became a lot more consistent because my behavior became consistent, right? The size of the exactly. box is not really a priority. It's the behavior around the box that forces me to do the same thing all of the time. And so if I'm buying, I'm buying because volatility is coming in right here. I anticipated yeah. the price to, to, to do this to come here and exit there. It exited way sooner than I anticipated. And so that tells me volatility is incoming. And sure enough, we got another box worth, right? And so every yeah. time volatility comes in, it this box is a unit of measure, like a measuring cup. And so before the war started, a, the market was typically moving three to four boxes per day. And now with the war, the market is moving seven or eight boxes per day. It's the same box. Uh, so it's like a recipe, 
right? The, the recipe before the war was four boxes, and now it's seven or eight boxes. And so uh, I, keep, I keep my eye uh, basically on the market through this box. It's this lens that I look through in order to behave the same over and over, regardless what the market throws at me inside the box. So, right, uh, so that old expression, um, think outside the box, we could throw it away and think uh, inside and outside. The inside, box. yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah very absolutely. And the, 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 the really convenient thing about this is what I've come to discover is every time frame has its own box, right? There is a there's a sigma on the one hour chart, there's a sigma on the four hour chart, and so you can play one within the other, right? You can play the five minute box inside of the hourly box, so on and so forth. And so I, I figured out a way to keep my risk in check based on this box and my behavior is almost instantaneous now. As soon as I see something break through the box, I know what to do. And when when we're back in the box, then my best interest is always on the edges. Right? I, I make the best trades on the edge of the box. That those are pre measured. It's a measured move. Right. So my and best, you, my and best you location, trade the you trade uh, the retests of the box, uh, like you had that one pullback yeah. back to the top of like ping pong. Uh, your lower box and uh, the bottom of your second box right there. That was a. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. Okay. And I, I do that quite a bit. The, this ping pong, uh, basically, this basis, this box allows me to trade trend embevelment. I, I, if I trade backwards, upside down, I, I still make money, but it's a difficult day. I, I have right. a lot of uh, break-even trades, a lot of wash trades, a lot of averaging in, averaging out. If I trade with the wind in my sails, my trading right. is a blast. It's a breeze. Two pips, yeah. two pips, two pips, two pips, a couple hours, and I'm done. And so it's, I'd love it's to be a strategy broker. that evolved over time. Yeah, you yeah they, they love to be my broker. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> no. I, I want... Uh, you know, I, I hope you don't mind me, but I, I asking you this, but I, I think you were at the trader funding uh, program uh, webinar yes. that we did when yes. we introduced it. Um, did you sign up and take an assessment yes. with your style of treatment? Okay, yeah. and how did it go? Yes, I did. It okay. went extremely well for about three weeks, and then I blew up all at once the day the war started. Okay. The, the right. day the war started, I, I basically, uh, my, uh, I guess you would call it ego got in the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Considering yeah. that okay. you guys and Blake and everybody else is looking at the results, I think that got in my way. And so, uh, yeah, I, I kind of blew over the edge. But the first six or 700 trades were flawless. Flawless. I, had, I was having a blast in that account. And then okay. Putin started talking crap and the market yeah. started moving double, Things triple changed, what it normally did. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, and, uh, uh, I, I, would you give it another try? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think okay. I'm just waiting now for the, the start of the new month. But absolutely, okay. uh, uh, eight cap uh, has the right spreads, the right commissions. Uh, the the structure within eight cap fits this strategy very, very well. And so, yeah. because I'm targeting two pips, that's. Uh, with this broker, I'm more than happy to move up to three pips if I have to pay slightly more spreads, right? So okay. it, the the ability to capture the two pips is a function of the ATR. All and right. so uh, as the time progresses, the ATR shrinks, and therefore that's when I stop trading. I don't okay. work overtime for, for less than normal rate, right? It's so, a cap, bro. Uh, They're not a U.S. broker. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So where are they so, located? Yeah, yeah. Australia? <clears throat> yes. I think they're in Australia. Okay. And I, I live in Canada, so I'm not, I don't have the same restrictions as you guys do, but it, nonetheless, they, they take us in no matter what. And uh, yeah. I had a blast trading through there. You no, know, the, the trading conditions are perfect. And this strategy fits well within the requirements of, of your funding program. And so the drawdown limits are not a problem. It's the ego <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> okay. And so All right. you you know, know, that's is. something I'm still dealing with. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, for yeah. me, it's no different. I, 
I, I traded a few years back and then I stopped for a couple of years. And now over the last six or seven months, I'm getting my feet wet again. And see, so I'm see, rediscovering I mean, you can a have lot any of system. Stuff. It's all in your head. You just, that was a, uh, yeah. a testimonial about how when your head and psychology is not right, you could have a box, a triangle or a parallelogram and it won't make any difference. Yep. Right. Exactly. I, exactly. The last entry in my journal from from that day that I blew up is I wonder if Dale and Blake look at this. <laughs> well, I, you know, I didn't even know Go. you signed up. I, I, I figured I figured you would. And anyway, so uh, it, it was interesting yeah. to hear what your reaction is. And uh, definitely it's a testimonial to that. You know, it's not, uh, uh, you know, a kind of program where people, are, you know, we're just trying to get money out of people without giving them a chance and a good chance. Right. Absolutely. All no, right. I was in there for a few weeks and I put in a few hundred trades before I got myself cornered. And so, yeah, it, it was absolutely all of my doing. But your program, your your offer is is valid. It's upfront. It's honest. And I, I will sign up again tomorrow. <laughs> it, it's okay. one of those things, you know. Uh, I, I have too many things on my plate as we speak. But for sure, for sure, I think within a couple of weeks, I'll be able to go back and try it a second time. And I, it's not people, that I, uh, I want. Do you teach people uh, your method? I teach this method, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I teach this method very, very briefly. It's uh, it's not a no uh, written down course. It's one hour chit chat uh, every week for four weeks, and then people come okay. back and see me as required. And so okay. it's really a simple, you know, uh, curriculum. Uh, it's more trade as, as or learn as you trade rather than forced education. You know, and, and, book yeah. learning, this kind of stuff, really doesn't so, work. Yeah, so uh, uh, how do people, uh, what's the best way? Uh, contact you on Twitter to get a hold of you, Jacques? Uh, Twitter or works. My my website works show well, your too. Website. Uh, show your just, website. Just, give, give yeah, just for forex.com. Just for forex.com uh, gets the job done. Here, it, it's bringing up there. And so it's it's just like an old dirty newspaper. It's yeah. a one page uh, with some information on it and the kind of stuff that I do. See, it's you really had simple. The, you had the uh, Moscow clock up before you uh, yeah. went. So you you know so you you know you should take that clock yeah. down. Now. <laughs> the, the fact that he was, yeah, I should, the, he was, uh, the, the, this whole event started in the Asia session, kind of tripped me up at the time. Yeah. I was totally not expecting that to happen at that time and uh, totally misbehave around around the event. And All so right, well, I someone's asking for your Twitter handle, so I'm going to put it. It's at uh, Jasper yeah, that's, Forex, right? That That's right, at Jasper Forex. The, the, the strategy itself, uh, because I aim to operate for just a couple hours per day, the, the most productive couple hours for my session seem to be uh, between 8 and 10.30 a.m. mountain time, so just after the U.S. Open. And uh, I do that for a couple hours each day, and it yields about three to $400. Uh, if I go beyond that, I can push the limits, but the ATR per bar starts to shrink. And then I'm, I find myself working, you know, for less money. And usually I end up having to wait a lot longer for my close to trade. There's this basis here is the, the, it's a high probability trade. It's two pips, right? So my yeah. win rate is in the 90s. And the win rate being in the 90s is what overcomes the upside down risk to reward ratio. Because my stop loss is 35 pips, right? Yeah, my stop a, loss is a lot. It's a long tail stop, right? And so I, I I need the space to operate to to average in, average out, to do what I need to do to earn that two pips, uh, yeah. much like an insurance company, right? So I'm 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 churning over my float, and I'm protecting my downside, uh, just like the insurance company really is reluctant to pay out on claims. <laughs> okay, well I tell you what, so uh, it, it got. Uh, I, John, I, you know, I could tell people could learn a lot from you, especially people that are interested in being uh, glued to their platform and scalping like this. And, uh, uh, you know, appreciate you being here. And anything that you want to wrap it with, uh, maybe we'll get you a couple of students here today. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, it, 
as long as trading, you know, is is what you want to do, it's one step at a time. It is all about psychology, so it's learning about oneself, not really learning about the market. And so that's kind of why I don't rush the process of teaching this to you guys. Uh, right. Anybody that chooses to sign up, it, it's really really cheap, and the intent is for you to keep coming back for a long long time. Don't expect to learn this all in a weekend and then be a millionaire no. by the end of the next month. No, it's a that process. That will never happen. It's a process, and yeah, it, it absolutely. takes most people uh, four years to have a breakthrough. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it took me slightly to, longer than that. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you know, if you're yeah, not willing to work hard and um, live through adversity, find something else to do. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. And uh, for me, I, I I suffered a big, big loss early in my career, and so I kind of devoted the rest of my life to get that money back. Yeah. And that's that that had me driven. I, I was driven to do this. A lot of people born with silver spoons in their mouth, they're okay losing a couple thousand dollars per day. I was not like that, <laughs> yeah, and so I that I think that had a big impact on, on my trading. So, okay. yeah, it's, you know, our upbringing, our, our view of money and all that kind of stuff will play a great deal towards your outcome. And it's okay. one step. I like time. your openness, we, we, too, John. You know, you, you, you talk, you know. Awesome. Uh, you talk about the, uh, you know, the. Uh, the downside. God bless the broken <laughs> road that led me to the box. Okay. So, you know, you yeah. talk about uh, what you have to go through to get there. And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, that's it's not free. important. Yeah. The market's not so, in the business of giving away free money, huh? And Mr. So, Market's uh, a mean guy, and he'll shake out as many <laughs> participants as possible before the job. move that they're looking for will ha happens. Then, most likely, without them. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's happened to me a million times. Yeah, it, so. yeah, and so I had to devise a way that put me a step in front and basically laid a trap for the market to fall into. And that's what this little box allows me to pre-measure. I, I can anticipate the length of that move and I can prepare myself or capture as many of these two pips as I can inside that box. And so, okay. it, yeah, it, it, it's all it's all about probabilities. Yeah. And, you know, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for uh, sharing your experience with the Trader Funding Program. And, Thank you. Uh, and, you know, showing us your box. And uh, I know, you know, I used to trade like this um, when I was younger. Uh, I I loved being glued to my platform and, and scalping like this. So you know, if this is for you guys, um, I'll tell you what this this man has experience and wisdom. Pick his brain. Thank you. All right, buddy. Thanks. So uh, great talking to you, John. Good luck Likewise. on your next attempt uh, at uh, on the trader funding program. I know you could do it. Oh, I know I can. I, I've done it before. Yeah. <laughs> I stepped All away right. for two years, and now I'm coming back bigger than ever. So okay. here we go. Well, you know, I root for you. Thank you. Thank All you, right, buddy. Talk, talk to you soon. All right, John. John Bye -bye. Francois Boucher. Yep. Uh, I'd say a French Canadian. Is that a good guess? That That's absolutely, absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, John. Good hunting, Thank buddy. you, Bob. Yeah. All right. Bye -bye. So, all right. See you, Ann, Ronit, everyone. Have a good rest of the day. Quebec. Yeah. Okay. See you, Ronit. Hey, Alexander. And thanks again one more time, Sean. Thanks. Adios.